Welcome back, we're right back to it, no time to mess around. I went up to the Death Touch Catacombs, I got a grace there last part, and from there, if you go down to the bridge, you take the pumpkin head out, you don't have to, you travel that way, there's gonna be a mariner. Over here is one of my favorite talismans in the game, especially early game. Now granted, I'm no expert, I spend most of my time playing this game in early game, so it's, you know, an early game talisman, but I think there are many better ones, but this is one of the ones I use the most. So it's the Chloranthi ring from Dark Souls 2. I remember it being that too. It's just a stamina boost, which is always appreciated, even for an astrology build, even for casting. I had literally no idea you could jump down onto those boosts. I knew you could boost up onto the cliffside. I did not know you could land safely on them. So that was interesting. We're still just working our way naturally this direction. Once you kill that little orb thing over there, you get a Nash of War called the Sacred Blade. It looks like it's a holy thing, but I'm not positive about that. I've never used it. Let me know about Sacred Blade. Is it worth using? Got to the Third Church of America, and then from there, if you just leave out the direction that I show, go through that teleporter, and you end up all the way over here on a crazy part of the map. I pretty much just teleport out of there, but I grab the golden seed that's there, and I hit those gravestones right there, too. Finally made it to the round table hold. I found a quick way to fast travel there. If you hit the back or select button, opening up the map, if you hit Y, X, A, it just takes you right there. I guess it's some sort of fast travel. Really cool. This is some kind of puzzle building, but it's super easy. You have to go over by that tree where that thing jumps. You gotta jump up onto the roof and then slide down onto the balcony. Simple as that. And then you get a free, what is it called? A memory stone. I get an extra spell spot, which is obviously important for a mage build, so that's hype. Also, the first rune farm is right here at this tower. You just have to activate that ball. I show it right here. A lot of people that have played Elden Ring, you know about this rune farm. Let me know if you use this rune farm. I, I never have personally. I usually just kill trolls for 1,000 XP over by the Stormhill Shack. And then I go right to the Deathbird for the 11,000. Fall off the cliff with the crossbow. Anyway, we'll show that later. I just went down real quick and grabbed the grace for what's it called? The Sophria Depths or something like that. The, the place that's like down and you have to click the right stick. I had fast traveled back to the Third Church of America. I hit that little shop right there. I put a marker on the map where I went so you can reference that. I go across this bridge. You got to get the Stone Sword Key and the Smithing Stone 1. The Morning Star on the way. We're going to, well, one, get a map of the Weeping Peninsula, which we now have. Huge. But also, I just wanted to activate a grace a little closer to Leonine Misbegotten because I like to get him pretty early. Coming up, I'm just going to hit a few key spots in the Weeping Peninsula. I'm going to mark them on the map, four different spots. Obviously, the goal with getting these different sites of grace early on in the game, going all over the map, is to find different churches and get sacred tears and to get some golden seeds. I already got one earlier in the episode just from teleporting somewhere because it's like, we might as well grab the grace, might as well grab the golden seed, level up the flasks a little bit. Yeah, the Weeping Peninsula has a couple churches. Kalu Baptismal Church, the Church of Pilgrimage, which is right up top. And we're going to pick up from there on the next one. Upgraded the flasks. Your boy's level eight, but he's got 16 intelligence. We're popping. We got the Weeping Peninsula map. 